So Jacob, welcome wherever you are. Jacob. Yeah, Jacob is here. Thank you. Please. Welcome, Jacob. The floor thank is you. yours. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. Thank you. First of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm very glad to be here. This is my first time at the symposium, and now I'm standing here. So it's the first good step. Um, I changed the title of my presentation. Uh, last, last month, I had a keynote at the Global Glass Summit in Prague, um, talking about glass. And actually, this was about daylight, but there was no common sense. All the spectators talked about U-value, D-value, shows a lot of green glass. I tried to introdu introduce people, space, and daylight, but there was kind of no, no happy smiles. There were no recognition. But maybe today, the audience is different. So hopefully, we will have some common sense in the way that we talk about daylight. Uh, I'm coming from Henning Larsen Architects. This is Mr. Henning Larsen. He's not with us anymore, but he is known as the master of light. So daylight is the key in the way that we treat architecture in the office. Just a very short introduction. Um, we are around 300 people in the office. We have an uh, office around the world. We have an office in Germany here in Munich. This is our project, ongoing project. Uh, to this summer we are starting up in the US, in New York. We have an ongoing project in Ohio, and some in Toronto, and one high rise in New York also. I uh, just want to show one, we have one German project I want to show just, to, just as a start, just as an appetizer. This is the new headquarter for uh, Siemens in, uh, in, in, in Munich. Uh, it's a building that is very, very high performance, but it's also a building that takes the city into account. It's an open building. This is actually a picture of the building, but this is hiding between the old, old, old structure. This is kind of fitting into the, uh, to the pattern of the city. So this is open in the ground floor. The whole ground floor is open for the public. The public can walk into the center of the heart of Siemens and be part of it. So actually the most sustainable thing about this building is not the daylight. We have this courtyard that is open to the daylight. We have the light shelf. We have the dynamic solar shading. We have the low iron glass. But actually this picture shows what is the most sustainable part of it. This is these guys walking there without, without any tie. Actually, when they worked in the old building, they all were tied. They all were so tied up. But they took out the tie, the bottom down, when they moved into this building, because this building opened to the public. So by creating a new way of thinking headquarters in the city, we also created a new working environment, a new spirit, how to share knowledge within the company. Within the big mothership of Henning Larsen, we are a small research department. We are around 20 people. Uh, this is all of us sitting together. We have four ongoing PhD project, research project in the department, and we have two applications out there. Uh, we are focused, of course, of daylight, but we also have the understanding that daylight connects also to the acoustic environment. So we have Imke that's sitting in the uh, left corner. She's working very much together with Finua. This is one of the, if you take, look at top, maybe all the gorillas up there with long hair, as John talked about, I'm part of the gorillas. But Finua is also part of the gorillas, and he's working together with Imke because when we work with daylight, we also work with the acoustic environment, we work with the sound. Because when we introduce dynamic daylight, when we introduce a sunbeam, the human behavior changes. We talk differently. With interact with the acoustic, and then we also have to treat the facade, then this pillar is there. And we have the human, we have Drew that work with human resources, that understand how people interact and behave. So all this is connected. It's not only about daylight, but how daylight connects with the people, the behavior, and also all the other parameters within the indoor environment. So when we work with daylight, it's always this balance between requirements and the vision. We have the requirements as, as the dominator, the, the lowest dominator, as we call it, and then we have the vision we build from there. So this is this kind of uh, balance between this gentle careness, uh, as Peter Hu writes in his, uh, his novel, that all of us understand the first spring day when the sun is on the sky. It's like being touched on the kind. Everyone is smiling. But at the same point, there's also values that we can measure and we can do Research is about productivity in the schools. It's about the hospitals that we, that we heard about. So finding this balance about 
when we use our imagination, things about daylight, introducing daylight, and also what we measure on, what we evaluate on. Again, this is just an image of what, what I talk about. This is what we can actually measure, but also what is actually the experience of the space, how we can create space with daylight. So we have kind of a small dilemma. We have all the legislation that talks about the unspecified daylight, the even distribution of light, the functional light. And at the same time, we have the question that we always raise about the specific light, the inspirational light. And we have, have to find a balance between these two parameters. Um, this is our dilemma. And I'm going to show some of the projects today that try to work with this dilemma, try to work with the right part at most, and try to forget about the left part. <laughs> Just, just we also we talked about this post evaluation, and the first step of understanding this dilemma is working, going back to some of our old buildings. These are two libraries. The one we did in '85 on the left-hand side is Skintoft. That's shifting the names. Skintoft on the left-hand side and the Albers Lund on the right-hand side. Um, Gentoft is designed without any tools, without any daylight tools. It's just Henning Larsen's own kind of understanding of light. So when we look at the daylight factor in the room, this is very, very dynamic. We have spaces where it's over-illuminated, where we can have the daylight shower. We have spaces that is more dark, more calm. We have the space up in the right corner that connects with the nature. It's an urban garden where you sit in the, in the cafe and look out to the green. So this is a really, really diverse way of working with daylight. If we, this is also a picture from the inside. If you look at the other library, it's at Barcelona. It's the site with the, it's the site in 2010 with the integrated energy approach. So focus on how daylight can reduce energy consumption and this even distribution of daylight. So if you, if you look at the program, the program is exactly the same. The size of problem is also the same. But if you look at the daylight distribution, it's very, very equal. There's no kind of variation within the space. So this is the way that it looks. It's also a nice space. Um, the thing that we did, we took a lot of students out there, and then we asked them just to walk around, and then they did a lot of questionnaires. But the most important thing was to understand where they get inspired, because a library is where you got to get inspired. You want to read a book in a library. You're not there to be productive. You're not there to, you're there to be inspired. So this is also kind of a way that we see modern office spaces, that we have to inspire each other. It's like an urban library. And what our experiment uh, shows that the sign with focus and even daylight distribution did not get a better evaluation from the users. 12% more people wish to remain 50% longer in the Gents of the hospital, at the Gents of the library. So that just tells about this way working with daylight, how they can inspire, how we can take it in, how we can use it to, to make people feel more inspired in the space. This is our own office in Copenhagen, uh, the mothership of Henning Larsen. It's actually the same, almost the same design as uh, against of the library. We have this big atrium in the middle, in the middle, in the center, where we can go out and have daylight shower. We have small spaces where we can sit down. And then we have all the employees, that is the books, that is sitting in there, that's that, that just on the shelf. But when we're going to read the book, we bring the book out of the shelf and into the space where we have daylight. That's there, we open the book, we unfold the knowledge, we share knowledge with each other. So these are the important spaces. The important space is not in front of the computer, that is not where we are productive, that is not where we generate knowledge. Then I also brought these two people, because um, I think a lot of you know them, and maybe we should invite them for next year. The, the right hand side is Bjarke, and it's uh, Thomas uh, Hillerwick on the other side. It's just to show there's a global tendency in the way that we treat our working environments. This is uh, the design of Google uh, that these two guys did together. On the left hand side, we see the old office. This is this artificial environment where you can have funny hats on, and like uh, 10 years ago, where everything is controlled within the environment. The, the other design is kind of, it's a part of a, a park. Uh, there's no barrier between inside and outside. The office is one big volier. You can sit under the sky and work. You can hear the birds while you're working. That's what we see. We have to connect with the nature in the way that we treat our workspace. 
We are not designing call centers anymore. That's we should also reflect in the way that we standardize our daylight approach, how we talk about the legislation, how we talk about daylight in our buildings. So how this generated knowledge, how can we bring it into a design? How can we bring it into a project? Now I, I kind of drop down in scale in regard to the size of people, and, and uh, this is a school, this is not Google headquarters, but it's probably the same principle as, as Bjarke and Thomas work with. Um, when you look at the window, this seems very, very random um, in the facade, but they are not. They are very, very designed and defined in a way that they should handle different solutions. We have the top where we want the daylight to get deep into the room. We want the view to the sky. We have the one in the middle where we have most important to look to the surroundings. And then we have some also in the bottom so you can connect with your fellow students in the courtyard on the street. So that's each window have an approach. It's not about only daylight in, but it's also the view out, the view to the sky, the view to the landscape, and the view to the street. So in this case, we will not go for this band of window that even distribute the light. We want to have different kind of settings in windows. Uh, each window have one approach. Uh, you can look out, you can be a part of it, and then have the daylight in. Um, when we look at the uh, daylight simulation on the left hand side, this is the daylight factor that John talks about. That we, when, when was it you introduced that one, John? It was 2000 and something. And then the five, yeah, and then the UDI on the right hand side. But if you look at the daylight factor, and this is what we use in the Danish building regulation at the standard, we have the only one third of the room have enough daylight if you look at the standard. But everyone that gets into this room say, ah, it's a bright, nice environment. Uh, how can that become? And we have also these two different rooms. Uh, this is two uh, classrooms that is uh, kind of on top of each other. And we have this room that is, the one is very over illuminated and the other one is very dark, but there's a door between them. So you can choose to go into this very, very over illuminated room, but you can also go into the dark. So we have the opportunity. And that's actually, this is how a school works in modern Denmark. There's no seats for everyone. There's 28 uh, kids in there, but there's only 20 uh, seats. People or kids are sitting in the facade. They're sitting in the window. It's being part of the learning environment. This is actually a class going on here. Now I want to introduce you to a small video. This came out last night, so this is one, one of our research. Uh, are you ready over there? As I work with the IT, we try to get kind of interactive. They always try to hide behind black walls, but now they're kind of... Uh, this is a small video from one of the classrooms. Uh, here we are testing how we can design the lighting environment so it kind of connects with the daylight. You have the student sitting here. This is actually a class going on. There's no kind of uh, black table. There's no kind of... The teacher is walking around now. The teacher is coming there. He's talked with the, with the student, they're sitting there, they have the connection to them, they can just turn around and look if there's something happening outside. If you go up, there's one sitting there having 10,000 locks, he chooses to sit in the window. So we have to treat our architect that we have to treat our kids in the modern society. Now we're not standardizing them, we are in the part of the world where we have to be interactive, where we have to endorse the diversity in the way we teach our kids how we how we work, how, how we work in the society. Um, yeah, you can see that that's, we have uh, 300 locks. That's because this is the regulation that we have to have it even if you zoom up to the ceiling. You can see this standardized um, uh, 60 by 60 uh, luminaires up there. If you turn to the next one, um, then we try, you can see the next one, we, we pencil something, uh, some uh, luminaires down. So we try to kind of create these uh, small island of light that connects to the way we treat the daylight. Um, where we have this ambient uh, pendant uh, that that kind of uh, is is connected to this small uh, small work session that these kids have. There's one they choose to be four of them together, um, working together. The one he is trying to counting now with his fingers together with the, his uh, his uh, side mate. If you if you go around, um. then in there we have this is actually the, the lecture room. This is one. This is over the illuminated room where we have the steps up. All the kids can be in there, and then the then the teacher can go there and talk. Um, if you go around again, 
And you can see we have more places that is more more dark. We we kind of shut out uh, the, the 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 lighting in the ceilings. If you go, if you go, yeah. And if you turn the the, the other way around and zoom down and to your left, we can all see there's uh, one one kid that you he he wants to work uh, by himself alone in this shelter place. And that's also, we, we just opened the Nordea headquarter in, in Denmark, and this is actually the same working environment that we see in the school, that you have some zones that is quiet zones, where you can choose in the morning to tap in, I want to sit in a quiet zone, I want to collaborate with someone, I want to sit in the cafe. So that is actually, this is a, a picture of the modern work, working environment that we're gonna see in the future. That is this school. Next one. Oh, that, no, now it's my. Uh, so this really basic understanding that I think that was Mary Anderson that had talked about this last year that we kind of turned our eyes to, to the window, that that light draws and we turn toward it is basically like we act like flowers. So so we, we this even distribution light, no one knows where to go, no one want, want, wants to collect or be kind of gathered together. So so by by working with very, very simple element of a daylight in facade and how we pin it down, we can actually create a more natural uh, learning environment. So one minute, zero. zero minutes, no, I have two left, it's okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just the findings. Um, uh, we have to challenge the way that we talk about productivity when we talk about daylight. It's not, co not call center design anymore. Uh, we have to use other terms, uh, and that's also how we want to choose or work with the building regulation. That's why um, Jens is there and, and want me to shut off, because that is an ongoing discussion, how we're going to introduce this in the European standard. Um, so this is also my recommendation, don't follow the regulation blindly. Um, use your architectural imagination and a small squeeze of common sense. Thank you.